Hello everyone. Welcome to call 11 of the 52 series, Stand on Truth 100%. None of the struggles we go through as a human experience are necessary. Not one. Will you believe me when I tell you the particular struggle you're experiencing now, whether of health or wealth, love or happiness, right activity or fulfillment of purpose, or any other, is not only unnecessary but can be resolved this very day. Will you believe that the trouble, no matter what it is or how urgent or impossible to resolve it seems to be, is literally illusion? Will you believe that it literally does not exist, therefore you literally need do nothing about it? Know that I'm speaking of literal truth, not metaphorical. Otherwise, confusion and delay of harmony will continue to be our experience. So I want to show you a way of simply turning your back on any trouble facing you today, or any sense of need or desire, and finding your quick and infallible harmony in whatever shape or form or activity the fulfillment of it is to take. Realize first that all this earth and everything in it and of it is illusion. It is the illusion itself. It is the imagery and experience of the trance state of human consciousness itself. Every experience we have as a human being, both good and bad, pleasant and unpleasant, every urge, every desire, every idea for betterment, and certainly every effort to survive or overcome the particular struggle hounding us today is a product of the illusion. It doesn't actually exist. It exists only within and of the illusion. Now, what do we do with an illusion? Nothing. When a magician saws a person in half, we don't jump out of our seats and try to save the victim's life because we know we're witnessing an illusion. The trouble you are experiencing today, whatever its name or nature, is that same illusion. Here's the way to see it dissolved in front of your eyes, literally and tangibly resolved or healed or harmonized this very day. And not by your effort or knowing of truth, but by relaxing away from the appearance and all effort into the fulfilling completeness of the true presence all around you, as you, being you, and being your entire environment of form, person, activity, home, business, job. The only true presence, situation, condition, right where the discord seems to be, is utter 
harmony and perfect completeness. The struggle you're experiencing is untrue, unreal, an illusion. That illusion is caused by the hypnotized state of awareness, collective consciousness. And while you remain within the bubble of that hypnotism, you experience and respond to every appearance of the illusion. If illness or disease appears in the body, you respond and try to heal the body of that illness or of that disease. If money is insufficient, you respond and try to turn a lack of money into an abundance. If success in job or career or business seems to avoid you, you respond and try to turn struggle into opportunity and success. If love and relationship is missing from your life or is a continual struggle, you respond and try to attract love and companionship. If injustice or insecurity threatens you, you respond by defending yourself and trying to find justice or security. But all of this response is equivalent to jumping out of your seat to try to rescue the victim from being sawn in half. All of this appearance, form, activity, situation, condition is nothing but illusion and therefore needs nothing done about it other than ignoring it and resting in the truth. Just as you do nothing about the victim on stage but stay resting comfortably in your seat knowing the truth. And then you soon witness the victim getting up as whole and healthy as ever. So let me show you a way to witness the same dissolving of the illusion, the harmonizing or healing or revealing of truth, life, love, harmony of any problem facing you and particularly the problem that is most pressing you today. Imagine you're in the audience watching a master hypnotist at work. He has a man and a woman on stage and a pile of ropes curled up on the floor a few feet from them. Above the stage is a large screen which, in a minute, will show the hypnotized state of awareness the two volunteers see and believe is happening on stage. The hypnotist hypnotizes the two people and tells them the curled up ropes are rattlesnakes that will attack them. Now we have two very different views of what's happening on the stage. One real, one hypnotized. The hypnotized couple are responding to the snakes. They're instantly in a state of fear and panic, obviously. They start doing everything they can to solve the problem or escape from it. They try to catch the snakes. They try to kill them. They make telephone calls to snake catchers. They try to buy time by concocting schemes to delay the snake's attack. They develop medicines and treatments to cure the snake's aggression. They run hysterically around the stage. They pick up chairs to keep the snakes at a safe distance. They do everything possible in response to the belief that there truly are snakes and a danger to their lives. The audience, of course, is laughing its socks off because all they see are two people scared and panicking over a few curled up ropes. Now, what is the answer for the couple on stage? You see how anything and everything they do within the parentheses of the trance will not 
nor ever will solve the problem because the problem is a product of the trance. It's not real. It's total illusion. And this is why the same type of problems seem to hound an individual for years. For just as long as the individual remains in the trance state, the problem will remain. The problem is the trance state. The trance state is the problem. Therefore, either way you look at it, it's not real. As anyone outside of the trance readily sees, which means anyone not hypnotized to world material conditions, but awake to spiritual truth. You can see now that the problem truly isn't real. It does not exist, not even a fibre of it. The unhypnotized audience are seeing the truth at the very same time the hypnotized couple are seeing dangerous snakes and experiencing a threat to their lives. Both experiences, the couples and the audiences, are happening in parallel. At and as the very same place, the very same time. But only one is true, the unhypnotized experience. Every thought about the problem facing you or me is a thought that helps hold it in place in your or my experience. Please take that truth, write it down, carry it with you, ponder it and ponder it. Live with it all day for days and days and days until you begin to realize why the problem or the sense of need or desire is still with you even after these weeks, months, years, decades of trying to understand spiritual being and spiritual living and being frustrated that the problems or this ongoing sense of need or emptiness in some way in your life or in your mind, in your peace of mind, is still with you. Here it is again. Every thought about the problem facing you is a thought that helps hold it in place in your experience. Every effort made towards solving the problem is an effort that only keeps the problem more firmly in place. And surprisingly to many, every treatment, contemplation, meditation, conducted for the problem, for the harmonizing or healing or solving of the problem, again, only serves to dig it deeper and cement it more firmly into your experience. Why? Because all thought, all effort, all treatment, all contemplation, all meditation, as a method of solving or harmonizing or enriching a problem, is an activity taking place within and because of the trance state, and therefore only serves to deepen the trance and exasperate the problem. And that's because the problem literally doesn't exist. Therefore, anything done or practiced to solve it only deepens the belief in something to solve. Simple as that. Remember, What's happening as your individual consciousness and mine is your individual experience and mine. What we need is a consciousness empty of all thought and all activity directed towards solving the problem. Let me put it like this. All attention on or directed toward the problem 
from a simple thought or simple activity to serious thought and major activity guarantees the problem will be with you longer and deeper. More severe. I know that many of you have experienced just this. I know how difficult it is because I, myself, experienced the same deepening and elongating of my problems. It's a horrible, unsettling and often very frightening experience. And there seems to be no way out. That's because we're trying to find a way out from the trance state. Instead of lifting above or out of the trance state and then resting in and being the truth. But certainly it's because I've been through, just like you, that dark night of the soul. And therefore I can tell you Know the truth of the illusory human state of awareness and don't do a single thing to or for the problem. Pay it no attention whatsoever as best you can. Now, what is the solution for the couple on stage? Therefore, your solution and mine. If we could reach into their hypnotized state and tell them just enough about the unreality of what they're experiencing under hypnotism, just enough so that they could turn their backs to those snakes, no matter if the snakes are feet away and minutes or seconds from attacking, and have that couple become still and calm until they felt some measure of peace stirring within, we would witness what the couple thinks of as a miracle. We, as the unhypnotized, and they, as individuals who now know just enough truth to be able to turn their backs on the problem and become still and calm and open, like a vacuum waiting to be filled with the saving truth, Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, the truth. We both would witness, right before our eyes, the snakes turning away and disappearing, as if their prey had suddenly vanished from the earth. And indeed the prey has vanished from the earth, vanished from earthly material consciousness, which means everything in and of the earth now cannot touch you. You no longer exist for it. It's as if you are invisible to worldly conditions and laws and consequences. You're invisible to so-called karma, to cause and effect, to storms and tragedies, to economic highs and lows to normal business and marketing and selling practices, to learned and trusted trading and investment principles, and to snakes. Illness, disease, discord, lack, limitation, unhappiness cannot find you. They're seen taking their toll on people, organizations, communities all around you, but they don't and can't touch you. Remember the psalm, thousands shall fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. It can't come near you. You're not there any longer. Do you see that? And here's the wondrous thing. Anything of a discordant nature troubling you at this moment, anything at all, including the most threatening or painful health trouble, the most deep or severe financial trouble, the most 
intimidating security or safety problem, the most lonely lack of relationship, the most ongoing difficulty with an individual or group, the most unhappy or fearful state of mind, anything at all that's discordant simply melts away. It dissolves of its own accord and you watch it do so without a single mental or material effort made by you. In fact, because there now is not a single mental or material effort being made by you, the snakes dissolve into nothingness, actually into harmony, like CGI morphing a troublesome image into a heavenly image on the screen. It's witnessed just like this, if a little more mechanically as the seeming materiality and physicality and objectified worldly imagery transforms to become harmonious, healthy, happy, wealthy, successful, loving, fulfilled. But it happens without effort on your part or mine towards the problem or the solving of it. It happens because there now is no effort towards the problem or the solving of it. If there is effort, it can't happen. It can't be witnessed. And that's why it hasn't been witnessed until now. But now you know the literal illusory state of the entire problem and everything involved in or around that problem. And so you leave it alone. You turn your back to it. You become invisible to it and the earthly world with all its ways and means. Now, again, I know how real and how threatening material problems seem to be, or most definitely are to the human state of consciousness. But please know that it doesn't matter how real your situation is to the world mind or how threatening it is or how near to failure or collapse or destitution or even death it seems to be. Know that no problem of a human state is real when truth is present. And don't now allow the mind to tell you that perhaps there isn't sufficient truth present for you at this moment. That is not true. The very moment you start turning to truth, you're awakening. And you have more than enough. You have more than a sufficiency. The key now is to stick with it. And the reason that is, by the way, is that you cannot have a little slice of truth, a little slice of spirit. You either have the entire infinity of spirit or you have nothing. So the moment something stirs within you and you turn towards spirit for your answers, you have the entirety of spirit. Oh, if only everyone who this day turns to spirit, picks up their first book, calls their first practitioner or teacher, attends their first class or retreat, if only they can know that that very first turning towards spirit endows them with the entire infinity of their paradise. It's finished, complete, fulfilled. That very moment, you, me, they, anyone, turns towards that first book, is attracted to one single statement of truth and feels some kind of inner response. Turns towards teacher, class, CD set. The whole of their paradise is in their hands at that moment. So don't ever let the mind tell you you have not enough spirit. You have because you have it all. More than that, you are it all. You know that now. So now the key is to stick with it, come what may. Stand on truth alone. 
Turn your back to the problem or desire or need sensed by the human awareness and rest in and on truth. 100%. Fill your mind with truth alone as best you can. Think of nothing but truth alone as best you can. Realize all day long and all night long that the appearing problem and condition is total illusion and that spirit is the only actual presence and form and activity here. Heaven is the only place here. The only body here. The only business here. Job, career here. The only activity here. The only relationship here. The only companionship here. Therefore, utter perfection is the only everything everywhere here. There is literally nothing but paradise here. There are no snakes here. Therefore, you literally have nothing to do but rest in the infinite ocean of paradise and perfection and love and life and abundance that you live and move and have your being in and as and which lives and moves and has its being in and as you in every way and everything and every activity happening here, right now, as your world, your business, your relationship, your purpose, your every activity. As you rest in and as this ocean of peace and silence, as an openness, a clear transparency of being or vacuum of being, paradise fills you up. Paradise fills your consciousness, your awareness. You feel it happening as peace or calmness or bliss within. This is the morphing of the scene of awareness from discordant to harmonious, loving, healthy, wealthy, fulfilled in every way, without a nook or a cranny or a fibre or a grain overlooked. This call is taking place over Easter 2010. The Easter story is the story of the final dying of the human identity with the transcending of the spiritual true identity, the resurrection of the pure spiritual being. So it's a beautiful time to be having this call. And of course we know that the time is being this call. So thank you, thank you for this call. Your transcendence and mine, from human to spiritual identity, and with it, tangible experience, for one and the other are the same, all is one, takes place as we discover the truth of the illusory world sense with its multitude of discords. Learn, therefore, that nothing is to be done with or about it. Learn to turn our backs to it entirely 
and to rest in calmness and peace to let the true flow into consciousness which has the effect of morphing the entire individual world condition from disharmony and frustration into harmony and fulfillment in every way, form and activity immediate and complete fulfillment takes. We had a beautiful example of this earlier in the week. One of our friends here has been struggling with a severe financial problem in business for many years. The problem was so severe that on many occasions it appeared as if the business couldn't survive more than a few days longer. And we've been speaking weekly. And since the January finished Kingdom Retreat, he has gradually relaxed from the appearance of the problem more and more successfully. Right in the face of a severe lack of money, he learned to turn his back to it. He learned to ignore it despite any temporary problems or restrictions it placed him under, both in business and home and family. It takes strength, certainly. It takes conviction and a real I will not allow this trance state to batter or control me any longer. Attitude. But he did it. And then, during the month of March, just gone, he was witness to the miracle. The transcending, the morphing of the entire problem appearance and its seeming stark reality to the truth of there being wonderful and overflowing abundance of success and money as his business and personal experience. He told me that his very best and most profitable month in business in 15 years, which was achieved some years ago, had miraculously more than doubled, substantially more than doubled actually, during this month of March. And without a single effort on his part. He didn't market his business in any way. He didn't discount even a penny to make his products more appealing or competitive. He didn't do a thing other than make his products visible and available. And then left them and his business entirely alone in terms of conscious effort or proactivity and rested in and as spirit completely. His total reliance, his total trust was in and as spirit. He knew that spirit is his everything. Therefore, trying to do something in the outer is folly. It's a complete and utter waste of time. It won't work. So leave it alone. He learned that. He simply sat as much as he could during each day, mainly early mornings and late evenings, actually, as I'll tell you why in a moment. But he simply watched as a few hundred customers found him and his products and bought them without delay or fuss. And he said that one of his suppliers asked how much he was discounting to, to attract that many customers. He told him nothing, not a penny. The supplier couldn't believe it because it's a cutthroat industry and the norm is to discount. His salespeople are loving it because they're all receiving maximum commissions and his business is suddenly busy, prosperous, and a joy to be the steward of. And the reason he's only meditating or being in the silence officially early morning and later evening is because, as he said, the only downside is that he's so busy. But it's a joy, of course. And during the day, his mind is not on what most business owners or 
employees' minds are on the business and the mechanics and the attempted success of that business, his mind is immersed in and as spirit. He has finally learned that all is spirit, despite the very convincing appearance it takes. While his suppliers, his competitors, his staff are bemused, and certainly the staff are soaking up their sudden good fortune, while this is all happening, our friend knows the truth. And here it is. Spirit is the only truth. Spirit is the only truth presence. Spirit is the only activity. Spirit is the only wealth. Spirit is the only customer. Spirit is the only response. Success Therefore, absolutely everything in and as business is already and always utterly perfect and complete. If it's already utterly perfect and self-complete, why would there be a need for human effort? Why would there be a need to discount or to market or to sell? Of course there isn't. Business already has, from the day it opens, all the right activity, customers, money, answers, results, satisfaction and joy in the infinite. Because the infinite is every fibre and form and activity of business. Therefore, as you make good products or services available, and then forget about them, resting entirely in the truth that all is already complete, perfect, fulfilled, and as you know that as you sit in the silence, consciously experiencing, being that utter completeness and perfection and fulfillment, the outer imagery must be of that fulfillment. It has no choice in the matter. Because it is your consciousness happening as imagery. It's the out picturing of consciousness, which is automatic. And nothing can stop it. Nothing. If your competitor discounted by 90%, nothing could stop hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands, whatever your business is as fulfillment, coming to you and buying from you. Do you think human competitiveness or human marketing moves or selling savvy has the slightest effect on spirit? Of course it doesn't. As we've said to this friend and many others in business, and the same applies, of course, you understand, no matter what your appearing problem is. We're talking of business, but the same applies to body, the same applies to relationships, the same applies to home, and so on. As we've always said... You have spirit. Everyone else only has mind. What's going to be the dominating presence here? There's no contest. And this is why he didn't need to discount or make an effort or market or sell. 
He's learned to live as spirit, not man. He's learned to stop using man intelligence, man's ways. And he's learned instead to sit in utter silence, sit as a vacuum, so that spirit can be his consciousness. Spirit can fill him up. Spirit can be experienced as happening as him and therefore as his entire world and everything he may be doing in that world. Everything he may own in that world. Everything that is the outpicturing of his utterly deep and perfect fulfillment in and as the imagery of world. He's learned that all true experience, without human or world limit, bound or law that can affect it, is the experience of spirit happening within, lived within, and then witnessed in the outer scene. Let us take your problem right this minute. And let us have the Easter experience, the transcending of the material man state, the human state, the trance state, and the resurrecting of the spiritual state, the revealing of the spiritual true you and the spiritual true paradise that is actually your world. Happening right now as it appears there is a problem. So let's do this together now. Close your eyes and just bring your problem to mind for a moment. There it is. Could be a small nagging problem or sense of need or desire. Or it could be something that the human mind says is a major problem of illness or disease or business or money it doesn't make any difference at all because it's illusion now With me, turn your back entirely to it. Drop it. It's as if you're walking away from it. It's as if, if you like, I've taken it from you, the entire thing. And I've said to you, you don't own it anymore. You're free of it completely. I'll take it and I'll deal with it. You never have to think of it again. You never have to deal with it again. You never have to struggle with it again. You never have to have one thought about it again. You never have to plan or scheme or try and wriggle out of it ever again. It's gone. The burden's gone. 
My burden is light. My yoke is easy. So give it to me. Which is a complete and utter abandoning of it. Turn your back on it. Now, simply, without effort, without trying to know any truth, don't try to know even a single statement of truth. You don't have to. Simply rest in the infinite ocean that is your entire guardian. There is not a single thing about you that it, spirit, love, life, abundance, self-perfection, isn't already fully being as you. All you have to do is rest in it. Rest back in it. Realize that the very body and mind that you have a sense of as being you resting back in it is itself it in perfect rest, in perfect life and love and peace. Don't make a single effort with the mind to try to be in the right state of mind or to try to be the right emptiness or vacuum. All of that, my friend, is unnecessary. You've turned to spirit. You're resting in spirit. That is enough by a long, long shot. When the mind thinks, or if it seems as if you can't stop the mind from thinking of the problem, perhaps, it doesn't matter. Just leave it alone. Turn your back to that mind activity as well. It itself is only the illusion. It doesn't have an ounce of power nor effect. So turn your back to it as well, which means ignore it. Realize that the presence and the power that spirit is as you as this very mind that you are makes an absolute nothingness of anything seemingly different to it. And that's why you 
do not have to worry about stray thoughts or incessant thoughts happening in the mind. You also don't have to worry if the body doesn't seem to be that relaxed. Ignore the whole human sense. Sit patiently. Sit it out. Ride it out. By sitting patiently. Openly. With that receptive attitude or listening attitude. as a vacuum waiting to be filled and then you will sooner or later now if not already feel the calmness welling up or flooding you or permeating or saturating you or glowing within you. You'll feel the peace happening within. Now your whole attention is on this piece. You're no longer thinking of the world. You're no longer thinking of the problem. Your attention is on this piece. Your enjoyment is on this piece happening. And your complete satisfaction is of this peace happening. So you sit and enjoy it. You sit in the experience of it as the experience of it. And you know that this is your heaven, your paradise in every conceivable way, every imaginable way and form and person, activity, condition, place, situation. This is it. There isn't any other. You're not expecting this to have to go out into the world and do something or appear as something or correct or prosper or invigorate or regenerate or heal something. No. This is your completeness. You don't have any other element of you. This is it. And this is the reason you sit here for as long as you can or as long as you wish. Because 
why would you want to step out of the totality of your perfection? The utter life, wealth, happiness, relationship, love, enjoyment of your being, infinitely. Why would you be in a rush to step away from that and get back into the imagery? I'll tell you, people are only in a rush still to do that when they haven't understood yet. They still think the real or the reality, the real world, is that one out there. But no, this is the real and the only. The rest is simply pictures of the only, shaped by the content of consciousness. Now that we do not have in consciousness our problem, our body, our human sense of self, our human sense of world, We transcend it. We witness the resurrection of ourselves from it to the only true, which is paradise, heaven, here, now. Literally existing here, now, in all its fully tangible manifest state. You stay in this deep peace for as long as you can, as long as you wish. And you 
know that the peace happening within is the harmony in the outer. The real and the true is revealed. With nothing to hinder it, nothing that can stop it, nothing that can delay it, because this is it and it's happening here. And the happening is the completeness. Again, you can't have a slice of spirit or a drop of spirit, therefore needing to have a hundred silences in order to get sufficient drops to change the problem from discord to harmony. No, no. You sense or feel one drop, one grain of peace that has welled up within. In other words, it hasn't been by any effort of yours. You've been absolutely still and it's happened to or within you. That is it. And even if it feels just like one drop or one grain, it is the entirety of the infinite heaven, paradise. There's not a law on earth that can stop that harmony from being revealed or the problem or situation resolved. There is not an urgency on earth or in body or mind that can stop that harmony being revealed, the problem resolved, the truth being witnessed as the presence here now. There is not what the mind would call a normal process with its days or weeks delay or a season with its month's delay that can stop the harmony, the life, the abundance, the love from being revealed here, now, always in time, never too late. Just in the same way that normal competitive practice could not stop our friend's business from booming in a quite extraordinary way, an unheard of way. Despite competitors and all of their human efforts... You can be in the middle of the desert and witness your true love walking right up to you. You can be on the brink of bankruptcy and witness abundance flooding your business and completely and utterly saving the day and turning it around. You can witness complete healing of the body that Materia Medica has says nothing more can be done with or about. And you do and you infallibly will when you transcend the material, bodily, earthly, human sense. And 
all its forms, its ways, its laws, its processes, its seasons, its demands, its cures, treatments, completely transcend, die to the human sense. Let it be crucified. Let it be killed off. Not literally. Because consciousness is all, and that's where it happens. Let the human sense in consciousness die away by turning your back to it. Ignoring it, refusing it. And resurrect the true spiritual you. Like our friend, learn to rest in, rely on, trust, spirit. 100%. And I promise you, you will witness what the world calls miracle turnarounds, miracle healings, miracle love and relationship and companionship, miracle opportunity. Where the presence of the Lord is, there is liberty. When the presence of Spirit is your consciousness, your satisfaction, your trust, your entirety, your reliance, your activity, your body, your form, your business, your relationship, there is nothing but life, love, harmony, joy, abundance, fulfillment. Because actually, literally, there is no other place or presence. And it is revealed. The hypnotic state is transcended. And then we can all start getting on with our real work here on earth as earthly sense, which is to help bring everyone else out of the trance state. That's our only purpose. That's our true purpose. And if you are ready for it, if you feel that, then wonderful, you'll be directed towards your right activity in the achievement of that. If you're not, it doesn't matter. You bring your spiritual being into and as whatever it is you're doing. And actually, that alone is helping to lift material consciousness to break material consciousness, to reveal the true spiritual being and activity. And so either way, the work is being done. But that's another story and another time. Know that I hold you in this unhypnotized state all of the time I know you, I see you I think of you only 
as the purity. There's no hypnotized you, as far as I'm concerned. There's no body that we're dealing with. There is no relationship issue we're dealing with. There's no business or money issue we're dealing with. I'm looking at that screen and I'm seeing that perhaps you are in some degree of trance state and so it looks and acts very real to you and I have compassion, I have love for that because I was deeply there, as you know myself. But the greatest thing I can do for you is to ignore it and of course know you as the true. So, as we leave the call today, know that I see you only as that, and it is beautiful, it is wonderful, it is joyous. As you now, hopefully, especially after today, can turn your back to the world, especially to the problem, and rest, be open, be filled with the peace that is the peace of life, the peace of abundance, the peace of happiness, the peace of love. Then, the day of your transcendence from the whole of the material world, the whole of that materialistic pull and seeming effect is gone. It's over. And never again do you need be pulled back into it in any way. Yes, you will see discord, disharmony, lack. Not really by any measure in your own experience. It may brush you a tiny bit, but very quickly it's gone because you instantly recognize it for what it is and you deal with it. You turn your back, you say, you're nothing. And you get on with your life with a smile and that sees it off. And when you see it in your world, in others' worlds... you again don't ever think there's anything to deal with. You never sit down to deal with the problem because you know there isn't one. You turn your back to it and you sit and experience again the bliss of paradise that is the true, actual, literal, happening there where the problem seems to be and as you do that like springtime in the gardens you see harmony popping up joy color fragrance happiness abundance love popping up everywhere about because it's impossible to withhold it nothing can keep it from popping up into visibility transcending resurrecting and more and more your world becomes that of paradise of bliss And the greatest thing of all is when, within your world, you're able to lift what appears as another out of their trance, their misery, their difficulty, and see them experience the wonder and the life and the love and the abundance and the freedom that they truly are. There is nothing as deeply wonderful and 
satisfying and purposeful as that. And that surely is our true purpose, our true goal. So, my beautiful friends, thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a beautiful Easter weekend. And I will speak to you, I believe, in two weeks' time because we're not having a Stand on Truth call next Friday. But we are having the True Oneness call next Friday, which you are all more than invited to and welcome to attend. In fact, you'd better be there, otherwise I'll be chasing your tail. (laughs) Life without you, my beautiful friends, is not life at all. So come and join. And it's going to be quite a wondrous and revealing call. But otherwise, I will be with you again. Look forward to it in a couple of weeks' time. Bye for now, and my deep love to you. I hope you enjoy this spiritual audio. Like, share and subscribe for more.